made it to an undisclosed, of course, location in Louisiana. Came down here and uh, got whooped up on by the LSU Tigers. It was a good game though. Sorry, I'm in Clemson territory. And um, so we're here setting up a nice little ground mount and I'm standing right in the laser. Abe's getting set up here. We're doing our typical, this is a power peak ground mount. That we've had scheduled for a couple months and uh fortunately we got a break in the weather so we made a run for we made a run for new orleans and we're putting in a 11.2 kw ground mount here with a solar arc and a thousand amp hour battery and we're going to use a pto generator for battery charging on this one so every job's different hopefully you pick up something on every one if you got questions let us know we're getting ready to Get our post hole set up. It's a serious hole there. We got six yards of concrete coming in the morning. And uh, got Johnny's over there working on electric. Getting these posts set up and then we'll, uh, we got a procedure down now. These are again too small to justify a pile driver at this point. So we just dig in concrete. And th this is the style for concrete, this uh, C channel too. You can drive them, but it, might take us an extra day but we're good getting set up to uh, build the electrical we had them rebuild the service entrance to get prepared for us we got a generator inlet here manual transfer switch their grid panel and back to back with that is our critical loads panel so it'll be some gutters wire troughs here disconnect and on the inside I'll show you too muddy right now will be the critical loads panel, a bypass switch, and a solar arc, and then a battery. So, customer reinforced the floor system where we're putting the battery. It was very nice of them. And uh, so we're just, this is day one, getting set up, laying things out. Make a lot of progress fast. Our biggest challenge, there's a, we gotta get to a bathroom up here and put a smart load. So we gotta, we gotta get a circuit up here over and around in the eaves we got to get our smart load into a water heater it's up in a closet so that might be our biggest electrical challenge on the job it's not gonna be it's gonna be like bread for us like bread <laughs> it's gonna be like bread for us okay caleb um all right doing a little carpentry and then he's gonna do some electrical i gotta go help abraham and antonio i'm slacking see ya Oh, we needed a little excitement. It's been raining like crazy down here. Yep, we got the truck stuck. We're going to regroup. Oops. Good morning. This is our third day and a day that we're going to finish the system. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. So here we are with a 36-panel Axitec 11.2 kW ground mount power peak on a beautiful but foggy morning. So we're going to sling these panels get this thing built and land our wires our typical disconnect you've seen it before uh, so we're excited to get this thing built and bringing the power over to the house and then we have a challenging smart load circuit to put in and then we got to get some testing and I'm gonna do uh, another cool we haven't done this in a while we're going to use a PTO generator to charge batteries because the gentleman here has a couple of tractors and uh, it's always a good solution if you got a nice reliable tractor is to have a PTO generator so here's the practical preppers PTO power generator it's a 16 kW with automatic voltage regulation the big difference is that AVR there's a lot of PTO generators but that AVR is just really 
good at controlling the voltage within plus or minus a tenth of a percent so that's nice and uh, pretty easy to operate we just put it together with a three-point hitch kit we got to cut the tumbling bar um, to match his tractor we're gonna put it on a John Deere and then we're gonna make another shaft uh, for the uh, a larger tractor but I think he, we're just gonna set this up for his small John Deere which will provide enough power to do what he needs to do but we've got to cut the shaft to make it fit all right and we're bringing in our solar over here and we're about to uh, we're about to get it it's a nice really nice work nice place been blessed with great weather and uh, but now this is the last day to get it all done so we don't know how we're gonna do it but let's get to work okay final day final testing making sure everything is set up correctly we're in limited power to home meaning we're selling all the renewable energy to the home we're also running this critical loads panel we put in our trusty bypass if there was ever an issue with any of this equipment we can We'll go back to the grid just as if we were never here. We have, uh, again, the North Star rack is a great space saver, uh, 1,050 amp hour battery. We did have the floor reinforced underneath that, a lot of weight there, 1,050 amp hour. And then the inverter is kick, cooking along. One of the new things on the Solar, which has been really helpful, is this under basic is this advanced tab auto detect the limit sensors I don't know if you can see that auto detect the limit sensors oh my goodness because you can have the CTs backwards between line one and line two you can have them flip the wrong direction and then there's four wires so what is six factorial uh, it's about 64 possible combinations of wires which is why we have some frustration at, during commissioning but anyway that's been resolved through a nice little algorithm they wrote Oh, just found out about that and we've got them up on the smart ESS app smart load is working heating water and it's a very cloudy day so we're not making much solar today but the system is working as it should be and uh, I'm going to share with you the SketchUp model we made we're doing that on all of our jobs now just helps us in the placement of things and helps us work with the customer so they know how much space needs to be allocated for the equipment and uh, so that way there are no surprises and so that worked out great so this is the inside I'm gonna take you and show you some of the outside so I wanted to show you another nice feature of the Solark is its diversion load control otherwise known as the smart load so what we did is we took and added a lower wattage element in here and we brought in a circuit from the Solark to a disconnect here smart load and uh, bottom element and we um, are powering we disconnected the two elements top element bottom element and the smart load controls that one this is a great way again to use your water heater think of your water heater as a thermal battery so we're storing excess solar energy once there's at least 500 watts of solar we divert solar energy into the bottom of that tank heating it up and then the thermostat you is used we don't change anything but we do lower the element wattage down so we don't overburden that inverter it's a great great use of solar heating water all right all right nice ground mount big old farm so plenty of room again instead of putting this on the roof no way this is a great benefit to putting this on the ground and uh the main reason is just being able to clean it, service it, turn it off, have access to it. So everything's labeled up nicely. Pretty simple. These again, the triple black half cuts. If you can see the back of your array, it's nice to have it all black. You don't see the wires don't pop out at pop out at you. So this is the power peak uh, ground mount system. Always does a nice job. It's pretty easy to assemble and. So we have 11.2 kW here. This will definitely zero out his power bill. And uh, we were very fortunate not to have rain here. Everywhere else in the country is raining or snowing. But here we have just a nice, just beautiful weather. 70 degrees, overcast, and good working weather. 
All right, and that's the solar part. And then the last part I'll show you as we're all loaded up. We ready to go home? Yes. Everybody's ready to go. So I'm like, put that camera away. <laughs> Stop playing. And uh, so we bring our solar in here. Again, the wire troughs allow us to do a lot of things. Get the grid in. Here's our disconnect for the AC power. This was the existing panel that had, um, well, it actually was over here. Worked with the electrician to put a manual transfer switch in for generator input. And then they redid this and put the panels back to back on the inside. Made our life really nice. On that smart load, that circuit is run up into the attic and over and down to the water heater. That was probably the biggest challenge of the job. One of them. All right, so we're signing off now from an undisclosed location, Louisiana. We really had a, a good time. Everybody worked really hard, did a great job. Customer seems to be very happy, and that's our goal. So if we can help you design a system for your place, it's always fun. We have some simulation tools, like this job's 10 hours from home base. So between uh, using Helioscope and SketchUp, and some other tools we can get you a design see if it fits on your property see if it's going to work for you make enough power for you and uh, so just give me a call or send me an email at info at practicalpreppers.com all right we are going to go home now we're leaving louisiana had some good food though we're, we're going to head out now this is engineer 775 signing out